for the first time ever, the reigning Miss Teen USA, Miss USA, and Miss America are all strong, stunning, and smart black women. Hallelujah! My mom, she always said, I don't want you to be in this business. It's very difficult to make it. But my dad, on the other hand, was like, you're an Abdul. You can do anything you want. <laughs> now, have you always been just a kook like that? And like, I want to look like Joan Crawford. Uh -huh. <laughs> Got stuck in a JCPenney's, mad that she wasn't at a Sears. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you for coming. You know, I gotta tell ya, I live by this creed. Always look your best even when you feel your worst. Can I get an amen up in here? Yeah. Now, before the show, I was watching y'all shut yourself down the runway, and honey, y'all is looking good and feeling gorgeous. Yes. Naomi Campbell, you better watch your back, girl. <laughs> okay, so now, it's time to choose our sleigh of the day, my sleigh of the day, because I was watching you guys on, on this runway here. So I'm gonna choose my sleigh of the day, and it's someone who really, really popped. Even though she walked out with four people, I could see she had what it takes. <laughs> okay, um, let me see if I can see. Oh, oh, there, okay, there you are. You know, with the bun on your head right there. Come on over here, girl. Come here, girl. <laughs> Come up here, watch your step. What's your name, where are you from? Shanda Ferguson from Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, GA. <laughs> your name is Shanta? Shanda, like chandelier, Shanda. without like, the leer. Like chandelier. Yes. You know, I lived in Atlanta. I think I went to high school with your mama. Oh, you did? I you, did, you yeah. You probably did. Yeah, you want to walk the runway with me real quick? Of course. This, you know, just because, of course. you know. Of course, it would be an honor. OK, be come on, honor. come on, let's go over here, come on. OK, you ready? Yeah. Here we go, come on, let's do it. Michelle Visage and Ross Matthews in the house. Hi. Love the blue. Thank you, thank you. Pretty crowd, isn't it? Always. Oh my, and they are all slaying. Yeah. Slaying. Because they, you know, they was coming to see Miss RuPaul. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna wear my little outfit up in here. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and I wanna say hello to Houston, Charlotte, Minneapolis, and New York. Listen, I wanna see how you are slaying your day. Now post your videos using the hashtag slay of the day and tag at RuPaul's show. And we might just show yours all up in here, girl. <laughs> okay. Now, today's at home sleigh comes from Kelly and her daughter Scarlett from right here in sunny Southern California who watches us on Fox 11. I hear they have a little message for me. Let's watch. I'm Scarlett. I love it. That is so adorable. But she was she was walking back like Vanjie, wasn't uh, yeah. she? Uh -huh. It's gorgeous. I love, I love it. Okay, now we're making some history in the house today. For the first time ever, the reigning Miss Teen USA, Miss USA, and Miss America are all strong, stunning, and smart black women. Hallelujah! <laughs> and we are Honored to have this triple crown join us today. Please welcome Miss Teen USA, Kaylee Garris. Also, Miss USA, Miss Chesley Chris. 
And Miss America, Nia Franklin, come on out. Beautiful. I love these colors. You match our set. It's perfect. <laughs> wow. I love this. You're all so beautiful. Did you know each other before? Before we won? So me and Nia knew each other. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so me and Kaylee met after she won. Yeah. Now, listen, I don't mean to assume that all brown skinned people know each other. <laughs> But you know, it's interesting <laughs> because the pageant circuit, um, it's kind of a closed knit community. It is. How did you get into it? So I actually started pageantry when I was eight years old. I actually had to convince my mom to let me start doing them because she's from a small town in Iowa, so it wasn't really what she was used to. Uh -huh. And so ever since then, I was allowed to do one a year, and it had to be all natural, so no makeup at all. Yeah. And that really helped me boost my confidence. You know, I was a little bit so shy. So when you say all natural, yes. that means no fun at all, right? <laughs> no, 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 you still get to dress up, you still get to do your hair. It's just really emphasizing inner beauty and mm -hmm. um, with the younger girls, you don't have to wear makeup yeah. to be beautiful on stage. Really? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of All Natural before, but I don't know anything about <laughs> that at all, you know. And now, Miss USA, yes. uh, how did you get into it? My mom, she was Mrs. North Carolina 2002. So she Mrs. Was, Mrs. Uh -huh. She competed in a pageant for married women yeah. in 2002. So I was like 10 or 11 years old. Yeah. And I remember watching her compete and just thinking, I want to be just like her. Yeah. Now, if she got divorced, does she have to give up her crown? <laughs> I don't think so. That didn't happen while she was Mrs. Uh -huh. North Carolina, so we didn't have to worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. And where are you from, Miss America? I'm originally from North Carolina. What's yes. in Salem, North Carolina. <laughs> Trafa, what's in Salem, North Carolina. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I actually currently live in Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn! Brooklyn in the house. <laughs> you know, because, you know, the thing is that, you know, for years, pageants had sort of a, a bad rep. You know, it's all about the, the superficial and, and uh, yeah. it, has it changed? Has oh, it yeah, changed? Absolutely. Oh yeah, definitely. So for me, for example, when I was younger, I wasn't the person to start a conversation. I never really wanted to talk to anybody outside <laughs> of my family because I was definitely shyer. So pageantry has really helped me come out of my bubble and my shell and yeah. now I'm able to hold those conversations. That's, that's lovely and that's a good thing. Were you always someone who could take the stage and shake that hair and say, hello <laughs> world? I, I always loved the stage, yeah. but like behind the scenes, I was always a really introverted person yeah. and I still kind of am, but I think pageants allow you the chance to meet people who you really want to learn more about yeah. and meet people who you need to know who can inform your own um, ideas and inform your your sense of self you know it's funny they never say that about little boys in little league or soccer mm -hmm. you know and, and the truth is you know if you are beautiful and let's just break it down if you are beautiful you do have a, a head start in the world and then having an education it doesn't hurt at all, but you know, I listen, I know it's kind of a, a, a touchy subject because beautiful people do get an advantage. Do you feel that way? I mean, of course, everybody can see that, and especially with the world that we live in today, there can be um, unrealistic beauty standards, sure. but I think us as an example is really changing that. Even yeah. in the world of pageantry and just society, we're starting to break down, down those beauty standards and yeah. knowing that we don't have to align with those to be beautiful. Yeah. No, right. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Uh, Mia, what have you learned about yourself during your reign as Miss America that you didn't know before? I've just learned the impact that you as one person can have on so many people. Mm -hmm. um, I've had, you, you, I can't tell you how many different young girls and on, people that are even older in their 80s and 90s just are inspired to see me standing up for the things I believe in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My social impact initiative is advocating for the arts, and so I'm really passionate about students across this country having access to a well-rounded education. For me, that includes the arts. Yeah. Yeah. And so I speak to different administrations and organizations about that. Well, 
Uh, not only are you artistic, but you, you're also inventive. I heard that you had to spray paint your nude pumps to match your skin tone. <laughs> yes, yeah, so when there was um, some suit competition in the Miss America system, I remember having to spray paint the shoes that I was wearing because you want to create an illusion of really long legs. And are so you, you trying to tell me that? <laughs> 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 so you want your shoes to match your complexion, yeah. so you can look like you have eight, you're eight feet tall or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so there was a brand called Chinese Laundry, who I love their shoes. I actually wore their silver tippy top shoes for a lot of my evening gown yeah. dresses. But for the competition when I was walking and I wanted my legs to be long, I actually spray painted the shoes to match my complexion because they were more... Um, for a complexion for maybe someone lighter. Yeah. 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 And so I had to that needed to match mine. So I went to Walmart, got a can of spray, <laughs> and went to work and they worked out for me. Yeah. I love that. Now Chinese laundry shoes are a mainstay at beauty pageants around the world. We call them up and let them know that their nude shoes don't work for everyone's skin tone. Oh well, God. not only were they grateful for the feedback, but they took immediate action and created two new hues to match darker skin skin tone. Wow. Isn't that great? Here's a photo of the new shoes. They're gorgeous. Yes. Thank you, Chinese laundry shoes, for empowering women from all walks of life. How great is that? That's, that's amazing. Incredible. And that, that's one place where you can yeah. use your voice to, so that people who don't have a voice can, can speak up, you know? Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. important. And, and what you're doing is so important to people around the world and young people who may have... Uh, you know, a, a self-esteem issues, you know? Mm -hmm. In fact, a few young ladies from the Little Miss African American pageant wanted to be here today to meet their idols in person. Come on out here, girls. A little bit of love. Uh, there we go. <laughs> from the Little Miss African American pageant. Uh, yes. yes. I just love that name. Everybody say it with me. Little Miss African American pageant. I love that. And that is, and these are your idols. Have you all met before? No. No. Really? And are you happy to meet them? Yes, yeah. we're super excited. <laughs> really? And um, say your name. My name is Nasreen El Shabazz. Nasreen, I love it. What's your name? My name is Soraya Smith. Soraya Smith. <laughs> I love Soraya Smith. That's a beautiful name. Mm -hmm. And what's your name here? Huh? My name is Zoe Simon. Zoe Simon. <laughs> Gorgeous. Now, I hear, I hear that you all have questions for these ladies. Nazarene, let's ask, let's start with you. Well, my question for Miss Teen USA is what was your aspiration in life during the process of trying to win the pageant? What's my aspiration? Well, I was really just trying to be myself, you know, growing up, deciding to wear my natural hair on stage was really a big step for me because I was really embracing who I am growing up. And so I really just wanted to stay true to who I was and who I knew I wanted to be. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Gorgeous. And um, Zariah, do you have a question? Yes, how did you pull this off? <laughs> well, it took a lot of work. Um, we had to do swimsuit, we had to do evening gown, on stage question and interview. And so I had to get up every day at five o'clock in the morning and wow. go to the gym. I had to go to work because I'm an attorney, so I had to go to work all day and then come back. <laughs> and then come back and do practice some on stage questions and current events. It took a lot of work and long hours and eventually it happened. I love it. Wow. And Zoe. So I, I can see I can see your brother in the audience because you look just like him. <laughs> uh, so what's your question? My question was, who's your favorite Disney princess? <laughs> well, that would have to be Cinderella, of course. She's just such an inspiration, and she never gave up on herself, and she wanted to make sure that she was inspiring other people and always being kind. I love that. I tell you what, let's take this to the runway and show these young ladies how to step into their black girl power. Come on over. Two at a 
at a time, okay? So um, two at a time, all right? All so right. who wants to go first? You want to go ready? first? Okay. Y'all ready? Yeah. Now, stick around, everybody. You don't want to miss this. Miss Paula Abdul is here. All right, let's go. up the dancing world uh, just recently at the Billboard Music Awards. And well, they were more scared than I was. I said, no, you're going to catch me. Yeah. I know where you all live. First kiss. Amy Ortega, while we were watching Aladdin, and I was like, Amy, get out of the way. I had a crush on Aladdin. <laughs> when I say straight up, now tell me, who comes to mind? Paula You know it's Paula Abdul. Come on out of here, Paula. You, you come to see Miss RuPaul, and you said, I'm going to wear my wildest that's right. outfit. That's right. I had to get, I had to do right by you. Yes, and you do, you've done real good. Well, thank you. You look so good. <laughs> How do you do this? You look the exact, actually, you know what? And you know this is true. You look better than you did back when Straight Up was number one on the charts. Well, thank you. You do. Thank you thank absolutely you. do. And, and how do you do that? How can we do that? Well, you look great, too. Well, Lou. thank you. I mean, we kind of came up around the same time. Well, I'm a few years older than you, but um, thank you, Dr. Zismore. <laughs> but how do you stay in shape like this? You know, I've been blessed with dance. You know, dance yeah. has been, and, and for me, dance is like, um, you know, you get on your, your bike and ride it again, and, yeah. it's, and it's like that. Yeah. Um, muscle, muscle memory. memory. <clears throat> muscle memory. You know, it's funny. Um, years ago, when I was growing up, right, right after the World, World War II, <laughs> you know, there used to be signs everywhere that said, um, cocktails, dancing. You would go, it was, dancing was a part of our culture. Everywhere uh, you go, people uh, dance. Dance uh, schools, every. But it's not like it's that. It's not like that anymore. Why? Why is that? You know, it says a lot about our culture that we're not dancing right now. Because dance... Music is the heartbeat of the soul and the spirit. And the fact that our culture is not dancing right now says a lot about where we are. I've toyed with the idea of opening up some type of a daytime disco for people my age. And, and because I'm in bed by 8.30 at night. Well, I get it. Yeah, I'm a yeah. dead <laughs> I'm, but there should be. There should be, there should be so many places where people can go. Because I think dance gets into your, gets into every, like, cell of your body it does. and it changes your life forever. Now you lit up the dancing world uh, just recently at the Billboard Music Awards. That was fabulous. So fabulous. Thank you so much. So gorgeous. Thank you. Whoa. <laughs> yes, yes. That right there. Now, okay, listen, you know, we I don't know how to do math, but I, I have an idea of where you are in your life, uh, someone being able to do that is really amazing. You know that, right? Well, thank you very it's, much. Well, but, uh, I, I mean, those dancers are little. I'm more than twice their age. And well, they were more scared than I was. I said, no, you're going to catch me. Yeah. I know where... I know your addresses, where you all live. Yeah, and, and, and you still, you, do you know what's going on in the dance world? I mean, you cast all of those guys. I did. And so do you know the up and coming kids who are in town, who, do you, you keep a track of, of all of that as a, as a former choreographer? I try to, there are, I mean, I, I was just saying backstage to Adam that these dancers nowadays are like transformers. Mm -hmm. Like, like, it's thank God I don't have to audition to dance yeah. or, or to have a career in choreography because honestly, it, it, 
their bodies defy, you yeah. know, they're doing things that defy what bodies are capable of yeah. doing. Some of these dancers, they, they're booked for like months and months on out. And I said, well, I know a lot of them. Yep, and I've seen some of them on So You Think You Can Dance. And I, I want to book them up for my for But my they wanted to dance with the legend that is Apollo Abdul. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. They were excited, but I think I was more, I think I was more excited because I haven't done, I haven't, I hadn't done a, a, an award show, a live show in 29 years. 29 years? Yeah. Really? On the American Music Awards 29 years ago, and for the same production company, Dick Clark. So yeah. it was like full circle, and it was really cool. Well, you've done real good. And we've got Thank actually you. some exciting news uh, to tell, but we're going to tell everybody all about it right after this break. We'll be back with more Paul Abdul. <laughs> With Paula Abdul, my goodness, you are a legend. And you know, you've been in the public eye for many, many years. For there was a minute there where you were not so present. Why were you not so present? Um, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, during the end of my, my world tour, the Spellbound tour, um, when I was traveling from one city to the next, one in a small seven-seater plane, one of the engines blew up and the right wing caught on, caught on fire and we we crash landed. I didn't have my seatbelt on, oh. and I hit my head on the top of the plane, and that went on to go, I withstood 15 cervical spinal surgeries. Oh, no. Um, and I took, I had to take sub, little, seven years off, and then I reappeared on American Idol. How, how do you think you've been able to do it? Where, do you have a spiritual practice? What do you do? You know what, I, I am a spiritual girl. Um, I, I believe in signs from the universe. I, I totally 100% believe in God and believe that I have angels that work overtime for me yeah. <laughs> that have been, you know, constantly around me. And, and now I have two angels with my mom and my dad. I lost within a year's time, and that's been hard. But I have I have strong uh, spiritual faith. But it's always it's always navigating this. Yeah. It's it, you know the second you think oh it's smooth sailing, it's not. But that's life, and I think that. Wisdom and experience and years is what allows you to really focus on how real that is. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'm so sorry to hear about, about your father. And you know, things, things, life happens, doesn't it? Life certainly does happen. But I, you know, I've, I've, it's a beautiful thing. I feel his presence um, daily. Is he who introduced you to dance and performing? And, no, I wouldn't say. I don't know where I got the rhythm from because my dad kind of snaps and clapped on the upbeat. Uh-huh. Or in between the up and the down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom was a, a classical pianist, but her rhythm was questionable too. Really? <laughs> I, I, you know what, I think, but I, I, my mom, you know, used to work for the studios. My mom worked for the legendary um, director, uh, Billy Wilder. Oh, Billy Wilder, like, some like it hot. Yeah. So many great Marilyn movies. Marilyn Monroe. Um, yeah. And she, so she always said, you know, Paul, I want you to have a strong foundation because I don't want you to be in this business. It's, you know, there are too many people's hearts are broken. It's very difficult to make it. But my dad, on the other hand, was like, you're an abdul. You can do anything you want. <laughs> and and, and I, I grew up, I grew up hearing that that was like yeah. great. Well. Yeah, but my dad was, it didn't matter how much I'd screw up in the school plays, but I, like I could literally, I would be on stage in, in, in elementary school and I could see my mom doing this. Oh no. And I could see my dad doing this. Like, like scooting out and I'm going, oh no. And then I see him inching up towards the stage and I see him go, now he's, now peripherally he's gone, which means he's up on the side of the <laughs> stage. And I'm like, I'm, I'm doing the, and I'm trying to remember the song and yeah. the word, and I could see him going, Get over here, get over here. <laughs> and I'd be, I'd be going uh, like this to the side. And he'd go, now listen, you go out there and you show him that you're an abdul. Now go out there and you do it. <laughs> and, and he would send me out there and then it was like, he gave me that confidence. Yes, just well, he ne they needn't have worried because you've done very well for yourself. In fact, <laughs> we teased a minute ago about a special announcement that you have. And I was hoping this was gonna happen. But can you tell everybody what's I, happening? I'm so excited. So a lucky winner from the audience is going to win 
tickets to see me at my new residency at the Flamingo. And you get to take a guess, and it's completely on me. And then after the show, you're gonna hang out backstage with me at the Flamingo. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. Okay guys, this is how it works. Now before the show, each of you were, were given a number. And Miss Paula is gonna pick out a number out of a bowl that's right here. Mm -hmm. uh, Paula, you ready to pick a lucky number? I am. Okay, here we go. Okay. <laughs> number 24. 24? Who's number 24? Oh, we're going back Listen to this. You and a friend have won a trip to Vegas for Paula Abdul's Forever Your Girl residency. You'll score round trip airfare for two plus hotel tickets to the show and meet and greet Paula herself. Congratulations, honey. <laughs> now, all of you at home, we haven't forgot about you either, okay? So Paula's got another trip giveaway to our viewers. All you have to do is make a video with your best RuPaul dance moves yeah. and impersonations and use the hashtag RuPaul Challenge and hashtag contest. Paula will select her favorite for a trip to see her in Vegas. I love it. I, I can't wait to I see love it myself. It. I've never felt luckier to have the name Paula. <laughs> RuPaula. Yes. I mean, I've waited my whole career to have something that says RuPaula. Uh, <laughs> all right, now, now you showed us your best dance moves. Let me show you mine, I, okay? I Come on that. over here. <laughs> I love it. You know, I won best dancer in the ninth grade. Of course you won. Yes, I did. With what step? I did the Crip Walk. Oh you my know, everybody. God. The crip walk. Everybody. Everybody was doing the bump at this time. It was the bump, the double yeah. bump, all yeah. that kind of stuff. And this girl I knew from LA, I'm from San Diego, uh, she also knew how to do the Crip Walk. And so we slayed the cafeteria when we did the Crip Walk. Okay. So can we have a little music I, I can show see. the Crip Walk? This is the Crip Walk. been in a relationship this committed before? No, just to myself. Yeah, well, yeah. there's that. <laughs> yeah. Now, we first met at the Time 100 Gala. Now, since then, he's become part of the Drag Race universe and took home the gold on Dancing with the Stars. Please welcome Olympic skating medalist Adam Rippon. Look at you. And look at you. And now, wow. I mean, <laughs> now, is it true that you're, you're not skating anymore? Well, I skate for fun because I don't want to get, like, I, I, so after the Olympics, um, I didn't know how to, like, go to the gym anymore because I only knew how to, like, go to, like, train for the Olympics. Yes. And all I wanted to do was just, like, use the elliptical for 15 minutes. Yeah. But I didn't know how to, like, do that without, like, getting anxiety. Uh huh. So I skate now for like fun. Now, and you 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 have a gentleman friend now, don't you? I do. Yeah. Are y'all thinking about you know tying a knot or anything? We, I, I know he's so cute. He's so sweet. Um, yeah. Cute. Right. Both of you, my goodness. Yes, I know it's sickening. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So beautiful. Well, we've talked about it. I I I think he's like the guy. Really? Yeah. Aww. Yeah. He's so, he's have just like the nicest. I know. Oh my God. Hi guys. Yeah. This is Michelle and Ross. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been in a relationship this committed before? No. Just to myself. Yeah. Well, yeah. there's that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't even commit to myself. So this is like a big thing. <laughs> How'd y'all meet? Uh, on Tinder. Really? So wow. this is this is like uh, way before the Olympics. Uh huh. Um, I was at a competition. He's from Finland. So I was in Helsinki at a competition, obviously very like focused yeah. on like what I needed to do. Um, <laughs> yeah. They're like, the Olympics are in a year. And I'm like, I'm gonna, I'll be there in five minutes. <laughs> and so I was on Tinder and we never met, 
Um, but we talked and um, we started like messaging back and forth. I went home. Um, then we started talking like every day. And it started with like there was none of this, um, you know, nothing to hide. Yeah. I was like, we're never going to meet. Yeah. So what does it matter? Sure. And uh, we became really close. And then after the Olympics, I became really busy. Um, and he was like, I'll just come to LA and like visit. Yeah. So the first time I ever met him was uh, at Tom Bradley International at LA. Uh huh. Aww. Yeah. So it was like a, a, a mail order bride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Yeah, oh, I said Tinder, I meant mail order. Mail order, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes. Says, uh, so and, many things to remember. <laughs> and so, and he, he speaks English? Yeah, barely, but yeah. 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 <laughs> no, yeah, he speaks like fluent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he speaks better English, he speaks better English than I do. Yeah. Where are you from? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Granton. Scranton. What are you laughing at Pennsylvania I don't for? Know. I don't they know. They already go through enough hard times over there. <laughs> Give them a break. Because, you know, it's interesting. I, I, you know, we all know about Olympic uh, people who compete in the Olympics and, and the sort of, uh, sort of withdrawal from, from competition. Mm -hmm. What's that been like for you? Is there a 12 step group for it or? I, I wish there was. Yeah. Cause it's a, it's a real thing. Yeah. Um, I, I imagine it's the same, like when you perform and, and yeah. you stop, um, that uh, you are just so used to the, that endorphin rush every single day of like working out for hours and hours. And then all of a sudden it just stops. Yeah. Um, and then everything's different. Like as an athlete, I was focused on one thing for 20 years. Mm. And then in the blink of an eye, all of a sudden everything is different. And I feel very lucky and super, um, I'm very grateful for everything yeah. that I got to do and, and I'm still doing, um, but it's a, it's a transition. Yeah. Well, you know, I know that you, you come from a, a large family. The, the other kids in the family, it's like six of you guys, yes, right? Yes, there is. Did they all give you shade because you got so much attention? Well, I, I didn't live at home. Yeah. So they don't know Aww. you. <laughs> there, thank you. I know. Don't cry, though. I know. That I, was fine. Yeah. Well, we're going to find out more from Adam about all things Adam Rippon in just a few minutes. So you guys stick around. We'll be right back. Kids. Now, have you met before? Had you met Paul Abdul? No, no. we have No, but and I, you guys love each other, don't love. you? We love. So we, yes. we were upstairs, yeah. uh -huh. and I was getting a haircut upstairs. Uh -huh. And um, I'm facing the other way, and I hear a knock at the door, and she, hello? <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm like, hi. She, hi, um, it's Paul Abdul. <laughs> I'm like, oh, come in. Come in. Uh -huh. And then we just, we just. No, I just, I, I love you. I knew I loved you before I met you. And he's, he's even that much more lovable when you meet him. That's, but you guys have both lived your lives with, with very strict regimented lives. So there, I think there'd be so much in common that you guys could well, share. You know, it's crazy. Like I go to the Olympics before I get on the ice. The first thing I say to myself is, come on, you're an Abdul. <laughs> <laughs> for Papa. That's for Papa yes. Abdul God. right there. You now you have some more fans uh, up in the audience back there. Say hi to your skater friends back there. Hi, hi guys. Aww. How you doing? Look at those faces. And you guys are all skaters. Is that right? Yeah. Fabulous. Aww. That's gorgeous. And then um, you have some other skater friends over here. Where are y'all from? We're from Los Angeles, Ice Theater. Oh, Ice Theater, yeah, ooh. I've seen them skate before. Actually. You have, what are they like? Yeah, I saw that one girl's uh, theatrical. I love it, well, welcome. Thank you so you. much. Aww. Now, Adam, yes. you have a book coming out. What's the name of it? Uh, the name of the book is Beautiful on the Outside. <laughs> <laughs> God, you're so funny. Now, have you always been just a kook like that? Yes. You have always. Well, so I, I remember when, like, this picture specifically, I remember I went in, they're like, what do you want? Like, do you just, like, you know, some of the, I'm like, I want to look like Joan Crawford. Uh -huh. Got stuck in a J.C. Penney's, mad that she wasn't at a Sears. <laughs> I 
great. I love it. And when does the book come out? Um, October 15th. October 15th. Did you write it yourself? I had a, uh, I had a helper. I yes. can't even write an email myself. Yeah. Yeah. You and me both, yes. Yeah, no, I can't even sit down to write a text message. And yeah. I, re I remember getting ready to start to write the book, and I was like, it's just like a long email. And then as I get started, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even write one of those. Yes. <laughs> now, Paula, have you written uh, your autobiography? No, that would take too long. Really? Oh, I'll help you do it. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, no, you, you, um, have you considered it? I have tried and, I mean, gosh, Richard Branson bought an entire publishing company for me. Really? And got mad that uh, Chapter 14, I didn't have a plane crash yet. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. It's like, it's like you have to be, do it in volumes. I like, I, like, Don't, I, in, in our book, you'll crash at Chapter 7. <laughs> It'll be faster. Wait, first of all, isn't Rue great at what he does? And this is like a long time coming. Yeah. What I, I notice the best is you can start a top, like, you're like Epcot. You can start in, in, in Australia and end up, end up in Ethiopia, but there's a reason for it. Yes. There's a method to the madness. Like, you always know how to come right back to... Well, you know, it's here. just, you know, it's, you know, I just, I love people and I love finding out what makes them tick, especially people like yourselves who have such ambition and drive to get to where you've been and, and using your body to do it. Was there a time when you started, was there a time you thought, okay, you know what, there's a cutoff time for my body and, and how long I can do the ice skating. Did you know that in advance? Oh, I, you know, I, so uh, the Olympics in 2018 was the third Olympic team I had tried to qualify for. Yeah. Um, so I had missed qualifying two times before. And I remember when I m did not make the team in 2014, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to mm. continue. Mm. And um, even a year before the 2018 games, I broke my foot. And um, I was like, well, well, there take it, it is. Up. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I remember being like, okay, you know what? I'm just, I can not take back the past. I can only work and try to be as best, the best I can be in this moment. Yeah. Um, but it was kind of like the best thing for me because I took a lot of pressure off myself. But I knew that like at the Olympics, I think as an athlete, it's so liberating that when you know that it's time for you to move on from something. Yeah. I remember the last jump I did in the last program I did, I was like, yeah, it's over. Like right. I'm, I'm, I don't need to. Like I, I've. It's the, like the time is right now, and it felt it was like incredibly liberating to like end that program and be like I don't need to do anything else to prove anything to myself. That's great. A lot it. of people can't it. get. A lot that. of people can't get there. Yeah. All right, we're gonna take a break. We'll be right back after this. First kiss. Amy Ortega. While we were watching Aladdin, and I was like, Amy, get out of the way. <laughs> I had a crush on Aladdin. besties here and Paula Abdul and Adam Rippon without playing a round of what I like to call straight up now tell me. Now, <laughs> I'm gonna ask a question and you all are gonna straight up now tell me, okay? First up, first kiss. Paula, straight up now tell me. Who, when, where? Craig Schiller, sixth grade. Um, he, uh, recess at the quad, on the quad. On the quad. Did you slip him the tongue? No, he slipped me the tongue. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Michelle, first what? kiss. First kiss, who, what, when, where? Believe it or not, John Smith. Uh -huh. What? Yes, John Smith, not the Pocahontas. No. John, oh, wow. <laughs> John Smith, um, summer going into seventh grade and um, in a basement party, Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven was playing. He had braces, I had braces, thought they were gonna lock down. <laughs> <laughs> Ross, what about you? Um, I, I, Amy Ortega, while we were watching Aladdin, and I was like, Amy, get out of the way, because I had a crush on Aladdin. <laughs> my type. <laughs> All right, Adam, what about you? Uh, my first kiss was with this girl named Elena Gedevanishvili. What? what? Get it. Did she get Gedevanishvili? Get <laughs> <laughs> she got Gedevanishvili. Um, outside the Quail Heights apartment in Hackensack, New Jersey. Yes! Oh. Okay. Oh. All right. All right, next. Uh, straight up now, tell me, Miss Paula. Now, you're on death row. What would your last meal be? Taco Bell. Taco Bell. <laughs> Go, Paula. Go, Paula. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I so love well. it. Huh? I love it. I just said that. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> Michelle, <laughs> what about you? Last meal. Uh, macaroni and cheese with gluten. I don't even care. Okay. I'm going to yeah, die. doesn't matter at that point. I'm going to die. doesn't Ross? matter. It, it's all day long a chicken finger. All, all day, day long. long. Yes. <laughs> finger Adam. Um, I think like fresh brioche with like oh, heavy God. cream butter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you had a long time to think about yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. That's brioche, right. please. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Taco yeah. Bell right on the tip of my tongue. Yeah. No, I, I would probably go with Mexican food too, but it wouldn't be from uh, Taco Bell. It would be something like that. All right, now straight up, now tell me the last lie you told, Paula. To my body three weeks ago, you could do it at the Billboard <laughs> Music Awards. Michelle. I'm a size four. Okay. <laughs> Ross? I think the chicken fingers thing, because I think it maybe it would be case. <laughs> I've been thinking about it. <laughs> I think it might be queso dip from Chili's. You ever had that? Yes. That's what it would yes. be. Yes. Right, Adam. Uh, I don't know. When you're like a pathological liar anyway, it's hard <laughs> to keep track. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, um, I'm not even going to touch that one right there. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. <laughs> I want to thank all my guests today. We hope you're having a good time with the RuPaul Summer Test Run. It's only three weeks, so you guys, if you love it, tell a friend. Yeah. Listen, I hope it's giving you some pep in your step or at least a smile on your face. If you like it, just tell your neighbors, anybody. We'd like to hang around with you every day. So until next time, bye. A little bit of love.